Thank you, Vincent. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I think uh, some of you, good morning. And welcome to this presentation. Uh, my name is Jinja Kim from Inhan University. Today, I'm honored to be here to share with you my, uh, the result of my work. And I, love, uh, I owe a debt of gratitude to Professor Lee for giving me a chance of this opportunity. Thank you, thanks to his support and guidance, I was able to refine and improve my research. And I'm also excited to present my finding to all of you today. My presentation is about identifying an underserved zone in NASMAR delivery, delivery service in, uh, for a case of the Korea. And I use the deep neural network uh, machine learning as for prediction. This is the table of contents. Uh, I will short, shortly go over the background and about the, why we, I chose this as a topic of the research. And then I will go through the literature review of international uh, papers and then domestic paper in Korea. And I will briefly tell about the, the methodology and how I did the data processing. And I will do the, uh, I will do I will share the result of the, my work, where uh, the target, the underserved area is, which places are the underserved area within the Korea, and I will share the implication and future works to be done. Uh, as you can see on the left, the parcel delivery service or parcel market, market for the par parcels, last minute deliveries, has been uh, increasingly continuously growing. And it's also the same in the US that US market of the logistic is also reaching up to the 1.5 trillion revenue in like 2026. So the point is we have to optimize or we have to find which places are really uh, potential market, or we can say as uh, which are the next target to be evaluated or refocus, to be focused. So uh, when you see on the left bottom, there is a trend of the uh, last mile delivery products. And I, I'm, not, I'm afraid you can't really see the, the namings, but the 29% are about grocery and 20% 20, 20 are about the life and health products. And this is, uh, when you see on the right bottom, the coupon is uh, Korean, is that okay? Okay. Uh, coupon is Korean uh, Amazon, the company that is uh, similar to Amazon, and coupon is famous for it's like on-time delivery, like half-day delivery within 12 hours. Boom! It's a good when you when you make an order, it, it will arrive within 12 hours. So coupon is, as you can see on the grocery, is like uh, half portion of 29 percent. Coupon is purchasing or handling those fresh food products as well. So here was my question. Okay, Korea is uh, famous or fast in delivery service. How can we develop this, this service in national wide? How can we serve this, uh, how can we improve this uh, level of service? I searched the, the available of within 12 hours. There, the, this map is about the places that serve the service is provided within 12 hours of the parcel. These are the metropolitan area, and then like. Uh, and mainly the service area is really similar to that of the population, densely populated 
areas in Korea. So depending, like the service itself is dependent to the population, like where there where, where there is a lot of person people population in the district, Coupang delivers or offers the service. But if not, they usually don't. So depend on the population, service level differs from 12 hours within a day to three days of standard service, which makes inequity between the districts. Okay, and the difference between the urban and rural area of the parcels, this is the table of diff, uh, urban and rural area about the parcels in and out origin and destination, and the GDP, population, and the percentage of the area, the, the spatial percentage. As you can see, 72% of, of the population is crowded into the urban area, and then only 28% live in the rural area, which means the coupon, in, in respect to, with respect to the coupon, they are providing They are providing quite a good service. Like they are, their model is quite perfect. They are targeting the seventy-two percent, which is efficient. They are, they are serving, they are giving, offering a service with efficiency. Ninety percent of the population, or 17 percent of the entire Korea, 17% is the urban area, we, we define as urban area, and 17% generates around 80% of the parcel. Like, it's, the parcel is really focused to the urban area. So, at the first, what I told at the first, general increment or uh, investing uh, infrastructure about the last minute delivery to the all all around the plate districts cannot be the solution for the rural areas. Like rural areas, not or non-urban areas, the like general generalized uh, way to for improvement of uh, infrastructure is not uh, efficient. So exact demand forecast and regional based solutions has to be made before we, in, we do the investment of the infrastructure. So what I want to do was, what, what uh, the, the bottom point of this research was to define uh, whether the forecast, whether the, the districts or the area is really uh, infrastructure investment needed place or not. Like, so these were the uh, previous papers about parcel predictions or like trends of the urban frights, those fright, those methodology or concepts of the papers. And what I used, uh, mainly used or referred was the Korean published paper because uh, former papers in uh, maybe the bottom one, yes, maybe the bottom one, this paper held, uh, this paper impl uh, implicated that the model is really dependent to this, its districts or where you, you, you chose to have a case, as a case study. Like, for example, if the model is uh, really focused to the uh, A country, then it cannot be applied to the B country because the uh, countries, the way of people's living, like lifestyles and other all the other variables are really Different from the A country to the B country, which means you cannot you cannot use A model A country's model directly to the B model's country, B B country's model. So I mainly refer to the Korean uh, Korean papers. 
which I still work on the, in, uh, reading an international paper to, as a refer as, as a reference. Okay, first of all, I I mean I uh, focus on the prediction side. No, oh, as availability to the minimizing the gap, like minimizing the inequity between the cities, how we can how we can upgrade or how we can improve the level of service, general level of service in the national wide. So all these previous papers, they focus more on to the rural areas, how to how we can reach up to the mountain and island and all these like abandoned cities or like not abandoned but really let low dense populated cities or not easy to uh, have access as a transportation. They mainly focus on these parts and they mainly suggested the way to use drone as a multimodal for transportation and they use like helicopters, uh, robots and other things. Which they didn't, they just assumed that the this uh, less populated area, less dense area, up will be the weak point of the. Like, they will have a poor service service level. They just assume as that they didn't uh, really define, or they didn't really look up for that. Whether it is really uh, abandoned or less service zone or not. The other part was the prediction. In order to make or in order to define that, define the district as a underserved or like it has to, it has a defection or it has a problem, we have to make appropriate uh, generation parcel prediction model. But previous models they use mainly they use about the time they use the time series factors or they use the uh, random generating factors, the, the new model, the automated feature engineering, but it's also, also not uh, realistic enough. It's because the automated feature generation is based on the previous existing features and they just mix up those features into numerous ones to make in order to make more explanatory uh, power. So as you can see, in case of resolving the inequity between the districts, they didn't consider about the population density in a target area. For the forecasting part forecasting, the papers didn't Consider they did consider the parts uh, time series, but they didn't consider other factors. For example, GDP, population, road conditions, or the other all the other factors, the households, number of households, no, number of houses, those things. So it's only about the time. It's only about the time and only about the parcels, parcel amounts. So we cannot. Can, the model itself cannot consider about the other meaningful factors. So, what I did was I used the geographical, economical, econometrical, and socio-statistical data and combined these as a, used this as a, a dependent variable, in, independent variable to predict the depend independent variable which is the parcel itself. So by detecting the error, we can focus, uh, I use the detection error method, not, and in that way we can focus on what are the, what are the error main, like districts. Okay, this is the flow chart and my utmost goal is to mitigate the logistic service inequity between the cities, between the districts, and 
what, what we have done is like uh, selecting a model and variation variables from the uh, previous literature, which we did, uh, which we will go through, and then I chose the factors that are efficient in affecting the parcel in demand side, only in demand side, which means uh, I didn't consider the supply side about like the road conditions or how many hub and sub terminals are there or all the other how many workers are working in that area as of uh, supply so because we will build that those factors after uh, after building the after de detecting the error we will after detecting the error so on uh, I did consider about the only the demand parcel parcel demand side and I scaled it and pre-processed the data that I, I collected and one strict stepwise regression model a backwards stepwise regression regression model because neural network itself the machine learning cannot define or detect the meaningless factors so we have to handle we have to figure out which factors are meaningful and which are aren't. So after running a stepwise regression, I chose uh, several meaningful or the factor that has a, that is considered to be effective, and then uh, we run a, we run a neural network model to with the demand only the demand factor to find the find to find the predicted uh, amount of the parcel. These are the factors that I got from the previous literatures. I used the, I used the, uh, yeah, I used the data of the corporation, the companies, how many companies or how many number of companies or employees are within the district, and educational level, like about the person, each person, whether he is like only he he has done only until the elementary school, which is grade six in Korea or middle school, high school, or associate degree, or BA, bachelor, master, doctor, and those of uh, like infants, they don't have the degree. So that there are, those people are defined as a norm. So, and then the house here, like, neurally built houses in Korea, we, uh, neurally built houses are mostly the apart apartments, and those buildings are really friendly or easy to easy for deliveries. Like the, the infrastructure is already made within the house here of under thirty, like under thirty or under ten. But household house that are built over thirty years are really uh, not friendly enough for the parcel delivery person to deliver the services. So I differentiated the uh, house here, and I just sum up with the the type of the houses, like whether it is a detached house or apartment, townhouse, multiplex house, or other things. And about the land usage type, I defined it as I, I defined it as whether it is urban area or non-urban area, and within the within the area, is it how much of the land area and sea areas are within that district or city, and about the population and population per the age group, I, I just aged from like ten, and just divided into the ten like age of zeros, tens, twenties, thirties until the hundreds over the hundreds. And what I told you until now is a de uh, independent variable, and I used the parcel data as a dependent variable. And there is a send, uh, generated parcel, attracted parcel, and then the total amount of the generated and the attracted parcel. And in this case, I used the uh, gener total generated attracted parcel as a dependent variable. This is a code, and I, I did a data collection for from the raw data. And raw data was uh, around like uh, 0 0.1 billion uh, origin destination rows were collected. It's uh, 
it's a monthly uh, yes it's a monthly month based uh, data which was September in Korea 2021 2022 um, I think it's a monthly base and it's it has a it has data of like origin and destination and some rows were detected as an error like as since it's the Korean data so it, it has some Koreans but there was a there was some missing values rows after after collecting data from the row, row data, uh, I did a data processing, and I think most of you are not familiar with the trip trip uh, flow trip flow length distribution, the, which uh, which indicates the which indicates that when the distance is short, the amount of the parcels made is uh, larger than the distance, those compared to that of the distance are far, the distance are far from the origin, which, which tells us, oh no, uh, and, and this is about the average time of the parcel made within, the, within September. So there was a there was around like minimum of the minus two thousand hours, which means like delivery time was detected as minus two thousand hours because these all the all these data were collected by the man who delivers the parcel. They uh, they they read the barcode from the origin place and they they read the barcode at the final the destination place. That's the, how the, the average time, the delivery time was calculated, but some delivery men forgot or they just uh, re, they just detected the barcode, they just scanned the barcode in advance, where, like, where, where they didn't actually serve the, the, the parcel into the destination, they just read all the read all the barcodes in the origin and they just read all barcodes in the origin also not in destination. Those were the uh, errors. So we we detected the minus 2,000 hours from the maximum of the 24,000 hours, which means it has to be like lifelong parcel. It's, uh, or he just forgot to detect the barcode. So we erased the, all the minuses and we er erased the, all the all the parcels that are over five hours, the five days, which is to 120 hours. Because uh, since it's a domestic parcel deliveries, we, do, we didn't expect it that it will be longer than five days, five, uh, five business days. So we just assume that's this. And the, the data itself is more quite clearer than this one with a trip flow length distribution. And before we get into the neural network model, uh, as I said, I did, we did a stepwise regression in a, in a backward, backward elimination using the backward elimination method. And I put the parcel delivery, parcel amount, total parcel amount, as a, a y value, the independent value, and then I put all the values, all the all the values that I uh, introduced you previously, all the GDP, education level, house information, city, population, age, land type, and other all the x, etc. The reason I did, uh, I did this was, as I told. You, uh, when you use the neural network model, the neural network model can uh, is really efficient and really powerful model, but it does not ensure the prediction is correct when uh, the input data is not correct, like it's not defined or it's not refined as like our intention. If all the variables are put in as an input data, 
then output will has a like 99% of accuracy, but it cannot tell it cannot be tell that this model or all the input data are valuable or output data. Also, the output the output data has a meaningful value. It just has a, it will be really dependent to the that data, just that data. Explaining that those data, the model is just explaining those data, not the real real reality. So. We did the stepwise regression to ensure that the model will give a reasonable result that can explain the real world data. I did several uh, backward elimination stepwise regression function, backward elimination, and I chose uh, four models that can just show the, the way, how it worked. The R, the adjusted R value, I just look for the adjusted R value, but adjusted R value didn't get much lower, but the F value did work uh, well, did improve well. And the, the decision variables that I used in the regression model four was about the number of company, number of employees, and the, uh, all the, uh, Educational level, GRDP, and the the land information, whether it was uh, urban area or non-urban area, or sea or land, and age group and a household. This is the main reason that I didn't use the just just the OLS the or their least square the linear regression model because there, when you scatter the, when you plot those uh, variables from the parcel delivery to the x variables, depend, independent variables, you can see that the, there, there are some linearity between the, some variables, but those of like GRDP, which we, we will consider like, well, if you have a high power of consuming power, you will, you will get a high, uh, you will order a larger amount of the parcel, but when you see at the scatter plot, the GRDP doesn't, with, from, uh, between the parcel and GRDP, as in my perspective, there is too linearity between the parcel and GRDP. So we, we cannot just define this one in, in a linear model. And also like age group, it seems to have a two separate uh, linearity between parcel and age. And all the other variables are really similar to this one. So I choose to use, I, I decided to use a neural network model and I used the six layers and inputs were 33, which means that I used the 33 X variables, independent variables, what, uh, what I introduced in previous, like this one. These are 33 variables I did use. And as an output of this model, uh, since it's, I want to know about the, the parcel delivery, the predicted parcel delivery, I just, I just set the output as a one, which which indicates about the predicted parcels of the that district. It, those were code, and when you scatter plot the the parcel delivery predicted one to the actual one, you can see that linearly the it's it's. Uh, the prediction was quite good. The accuracy was uh, recorded as 95%. And overall prediction, the, the trend of prediction was quite same. Like metropolitan, this are the actual one, and this are, are the prediction one. The metropolitan area and Busan, which is the second large country, the second large city in Korea, they had a highly dense parcel. And some of the, the other areas of the Korea with a big city in the local recorded a high volume of the parcel. 
Okay, uh, I think I didn't explain about the, why I did this like, neural network model to detect the error. So, and when you see these two, these two uh, figures, you can clearly see that the trend is quite the same, but I, uh, as I said, I use only the demand side of the variables, like populations and like uh, population, number of employees in company, company, number of company, those things. And I didn't, I just excluded the supply side in order to find out the potential, you uh, know, like underserved or like the districts that are not making or not generating or attracting the parcels enough than expected. Like if you have 100 person, we assume that well, the parcel will be around parcel generated or attracted will be around 100. But actual parcel recorded is like, if like, actual parcel recorded is like 50, then there is a discrepancy between of 50, which means you are not, this district, this district is not generating enough volume of the parcel in some reason. We don't know what is the main reason, but in some reason, the, the districts are not making parcels enough. And how do we know that? By using the uh, by using a accurate uh, prediction model, we can tell that okay, 100% equals to the 100 parcel in our prediction model with a purity of 95%. Then, if uh, if one district are showing around like 50, then the discrepancy of like 50 of uh, less less generated or attracted parcels are has to be uh, explained by the other factors in supply side because we did the prediction based on this uh, demand side. So we intentionally made the error or we intentionally detected the error and we just focused more on to the error, error, uh, error districts. Okay, when you see in the, when you see at the, the result of the error, visualized uh, result of the error in Korea, you can see that uh, in, uh, in Seoul, in the, one of the uh, capital, uh, capital city and biggest city in the Korea, there are some uh, underserved or like uh, less generated volume of the dis district that are recorded as a less generated. And the one thing was, the one, thing, one fascinating thing was that we, uh, in Korea, we consider the Jeju Island as one of the abandoned or like uh, has to be improved. The service level is low, so we have to improve the level of the service within the Jeju. But Jeju Island, uh, appears to be they are making quite a good amount of the parcel itself within the within our model of the ninety five percent of the accuracy the predicting prediction accuracy they are quite doing well in this in this model okay uh, this is a result of the prediction and this is the result of the error detection. Uh, like the errors means like less underserved, like under generated or attracted areas that has to be re resolved to to make efficiency within the uh, within the parcel service. Obviously, the uh, countryside, which we tell as an island or like uh, those cities. Uh, Within, like, located on the mountain or those sites, rural areas, the portion of those areas who are underserved districts or USD, the USD, underserved districts, 
were the highest, but proportion, the, the, the fascinating ones were that within the capital city, 20% of the, within the, uh, within the capital city, one of the, uh, one of the biggest city, 20% are detected as they are not making uh, if enough volume of attraction or generation. And for the local big cities, 50% are detected as uh, those cities, districts that are not making enough volume of generation and attraction of the parcel. So, obviously, it's like seventy-seven percent. Like, it is for sure that countryside cities, like in cities in mountains and island, are has to be resolved. Has to has to have solution. Has to have infrastructure to boost up their parcel generation. But the one thing is, uh, until now, we just only focus on the local small cities and local uh, countryside cities, but there are more potentials, like, and there is certain demand or certain has to be resolved, a uh, certain problem within the big cities. We consider that big cities are already, uh, already having a, enough infrastructure and they, will, they, are, they don't have any matters of, uh, of a supply. Okay. Uh, until since it's an ongoing uh, research, and I'm doing on, I'm do, I'm further looking for the uh, supply side. So this is uh, this results are the uh, final un until now. And implication of this, my research is that uh, we did consider uh, many vari uh, various variables to compare to that of the previous ones and the accuracy or the yes defining how defining judging the cities that are uh, has to be the target of the uh, future research. Not, not just the rural area is the targeted areas to resolve or to to have a research or to invest, but also within the metropolitan area or big cities, there has there are some areas that are that are on that has to be resolved or focused to the focus to enhance the level of the service. And yes, I think this is uh, it for my presentation. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have uh, questions. So maybe I will explain more details or like those that I forgot to mention in a question period. Thank you. Thank you.